Hello, hello everyone. How are you? It is B, and welcome to Psychic Sounds by B. We are going to get into this full moon in Libra reading. Uh, the full moon is happening on April 16th at 2.55 p.m. Eastern Time and 1.55 p.m. Central Time. Just want to say thank you so much for all your likes, your shares, and your subscribes. I certainly do appreciate it. For those of you that wish to subscribe to my channel, please make sure you click on that notification button and that little bell. Make sure that little bell is wiggling for all notifications so you will be immediately notified when I post my videos. Also want to uh, let people know that I have a good friend and he has developed some great music, some great soul deep music. You can feel it in your aura when you listen to it. If any of you would want to take a, a look down in the description box, click on that link and um, just be taken to some really beautiful shamanic music. It's, it's really, really beautiful. Okay. It's about a journey. It tells a story and it's at its beginning stages. So I'm just curious what you guys think about it. All right, let's go ahead and let's get to it. All right, so here we are with this full moon in Libra. Now I'm going to tell everybody right now, this is not going to be an easy full moon because we have two particular aspects that are difficult uh, going up against this full moon. And that is a quincunx with Jupiter and Neptune conjunction in Pisces. And it is also the Pluto square. So Pluto in Capricorn is going to be squaring this full moon. It is going to make things a little bit difficult. And it's very interesting how the dynamics work. So I want to tell you about this. Based on whatever it was that climaxes, ends, or needs to be addressed in Libra, in your house of Libra, it is going to inherently cause difficulties awkwardness, uh, cross purposes, even discord, where Jupiter and Neptune currently sit. Now, Jupiter conjunct Neptune in Pisces is significant because what it does is it is an expansion of the illusion. It's an expansion of what is already boundaryless. It is the expansion of the disillusionment. It could also be the expansion of great creativity. But again, there is a little bit of awkwardness that go along with it, okay? The other thing we have going on is with that Pluto square, okay? So the square is happening with Pluto and Capricorn. Now, Capricorn rules banks, hierarchies, fathers, uh, status, career restrictions, depression, all of those things, commitments and loyalties. But with Pluto here, Pluto is breaking that down. Pluto is transforming that. And it is now going to laser focus on this full moon. So as you are celebrating the ending of something, as you are celebrating the culmination or addressing something once and for all, in your equality, justice, fairness, business partnerships, and romantic partnerships. It's like whack-a-mole. There are going to be two other issues that pop up that are of significance. One of them is just awkwardness, discord. You got to try to find a way to repackage it. But the other one is great tension because of whatever is culminating, climaxing, or needing to be addressed in the full moon area of Libra. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about this. This is happening at 26 degrees. When you look at the two and the six, you've got the two, which is all about the one-on-one -on -one dialogue. When you think of two, you think of, you think of a couple, you think of a partner, you think of, you know, mano y mano, you think that way of two, okay? Maybe contracts, maybe partnerships. And so there is a one-on-one -on -one discussion with one other person. And that one-on-one -on -one discussion with that one other person is all about something that's being created. It's all about something that needs to be nurtured. It's all about something that needs to have great detail and scrutiny and strategy associated with it. And this is happening in order to create a level of strength in one's life, a level of self 
sovereignty. Okay, sovereignty. But it could also be to the negative, creating power plays or power grabs. This may have already happened. It probably could have. Maybe even happened up to a week ago. Full moons can have that weird culminating effect up to three to five days before the full moon in my experience. So that is coming up. That is what is happening here. Now, if you have um, any planets or significant positions such as rising between 20 and 30 degrees of the cardinal signs, this is going to affect you greatly. If you are one of the fixed signs, if you have anything from 28 degrees of Libra up to about 5 degrees of Scorpio, you are definitely going to be affected by this as well. And again, this is tense energy. Be prepared for this. I'll tell you where these are likely to happen for you. Now, the one thing I do want to mention as we're culminating, as we're addressing something, it is of utmost importance on this day, we do not start anything new. We have got to wrap things up. We have got to address something, but don't launch anything new, okay? Don't even think about it, all right? Um, but you can talk about it. And the reason why I say that is we have a void, of course, moon that's going to be bringing the energy in with this full moon, okay? It's going to be pegged with this full moon. It is happening on April 16th at 5.58 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until 8.24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you definitely do not want to bring that energy with, all right? I wouldn't discuss anything at this time. I wouldn't discuss, you know, any new projects at this time. Don't even discuss it, okay? Because that full moon energy is going to basically be impregnated within that void of course moon. So try to tie things up. Try to complete things between 5.58 and 8.24 p.m. Things that have already been started. So don't do anything new here. All right. So let's go ahead and let's move forward. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Libra energy. Libras, by and large, are always trying to find balance. They generally are in fields where things have to be balanced out. Um, this could be a scientist. This could be a carpenter. This could be um, a counselor. Okay. Libras perpetually must find balance. This is why imbalance finds them so easily because they're so good at finding balance in everything. So the, this is why it's, it's kind of like a, a catch-22. So Libras are like, I don't understand it. I'm always balancing things out. But why are people coming to me with their problems? Why are people, because you're the balancer, because you desire balance. And by you desiring balance so much, you're attracting imbalance so that you can fix it. All right. So a lot of times uh, Libras also have, um, you know, a lot of characteristics as it relates to obviously love because they're ruled by Venus. They romanticize a lot. And when things are not perfect or when things are not according to their romantic whims, they tend to get either, you know, disenfranchised or they get disillusioned or those types of things. I'm telling you this full moon in Libra is definitely with, with Libra, its ruler, Venus here as well. This is full on rose colored glasses. Now, so be careful what you're enamored by or what you are um, being enticed by. It's not it's probably not what you think it is. And this includes relationships. Try to keep things very rational. Try to keep things very comfortable. Try not to make things too intricate or detailed. 
Very, very important. Make things as simple as possible with this full moon energy, especially within business partnerships and romantic partnerships. The Libra rules the other in our life. So Libra is going to come in and basically say, what about the other? It's not about you. It's about everybody else. Okay. And Libras can be selfish. They can. But by and large, most Libras give to a point where it's, it's almost self-sabotaging. Okay. Over time, once they get into their 50s and their 60s, they learn that giving of yourself to the point of exhaustion is not going to solve the world's problems. Okay. So this is just the lesson that Libras kind of go through. And Libras, let me know what you think about that. But the energy that we're dealing with here are Libra-esque energies, of course, because we have the full moon in Libra. So these are some of the aspects that we're probably going to be going through here. So just, you know, be aware of this. Let me check my recording and make sure it's doing well. Yes, it is doing well. Very well. Very well. Okay. So this energy is going to be about the other versus the self. Okay. Your identity versus someone else's needs or wants. And for some of you, this is going to be, how am I going to get support from the other, whether it be business or romantic? There could be energies out there where we're celebrating others' individual strengths to form a more solid partnership. This is a really great way to use this full moon. Call out your partner and their strengths and celebrate it whatever that may be. Doing the work to recognize and demand fair treatment. Are you being treated fairly at work, at home? Not blindly trusting others. This was one that kind of came in as a download, but it's important uh, to mention. You know, there's a lot of people out there saying, trust me, trust me, trust me. Can you trust them? Should you trust them? Be careful. Do not blindly trust others. Efforts to grow support of people around you. Very important. Even for some of those, especially the cardinal signs and the fixed signs, uh, there could be a deception or an illusion that is recognized and steps will then be taken to not fall for the trickery in those types of relationships again. There could be righteous indignation regarding the self, and dusting oneself off after a battle of sorts. Structure or assistance from a father figure or older person is highlighted. Heavy burdens carried on behalf of another may end. Now, Saturn is in Aquarius. And Saturn is in support of this full moon. So the possible restriction, the father energy, the elder energy, Time might be on your side. Um, being committed, being loyal, that is what will give you a little bit of support through this energy. So if you know how to use it, it won't be as tense for you as others. And I will remind people that generally full moon energy, it can last as long as six months, but generally it, it, fizzles out about two to three weeks out, two to four weeks out, okay? So you're going to be contending with this energy. Now, what I'm going to do is I am, and I'm going to go through all of these signs specifically. And as I've asked before, and I am so grateful of uh, my wonderful viewers out there and subscribers that take their time and they put down timestamps. And it is greatly, greatly appreciated. And if you could also put a timestamp for the summary at the end, I would certainly appreciate that as well. Um, the thing about it is, is that this is a lot of work. This, this report alone has already taken me about two and a half hours. Okay. And that's not including all of the thinking that I was doing behind it. So now it's going to take an additional hour 
and then it's going to take an additional half hour. So that's three and a half hours of my time. And I don't know how much you guys get paid an hour, but if this is worth something to you, you know, and you feel so kind to donate or to get a consult with me or buy some merchandise, you can do that as well. But this does take time. And I appreciate people out there understanding that, you know, it's a lot of work. And any help that you can offer me through putting those timestamps down, I really appreciate it. Just be blessed. I really appreciate you. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to get started here. And um, a reminder, those aspects, those statements that I, I just said about the other versus the self, how to get support from the other, be it business or romantic, that is where this energy is culminating, being addressed or um, ended in your full moon in Libra house. So remember to take that energetic characteristic into your full moon house, okay? And I'll expand on that because you're going to need to know, all right? Let's go ahead and let's get started. We are going to start off with the sign I always start off with, which is Capricorn. Capricorn, for you, you have energy here in your full house, our full house, <laughs> full moon in your house, your 10th house, and you actually rule the 10th house. So you're really going to feel this. Again, the cardinal signs are really going to feel this. So you've got something culminating, needing to be addressed or ended as it relates to the 10th house of status and career. Now, whatever is happening here with your status and your career, with all the aspects I just mentioned, you are going to have an awkward perhaps discord, or potentially working at cross purposes as it relates to your third house, okay? So whatever happened in your 10th, whatever that fullness, that culmination ends up being, then your third house is activated also with this, you know, expansion of illusion or disillusion or boundarylessness or great creation, as it relates to contracts, agreements, negotiations, short distance travel, siblings. The truth versus the lie. So something may be coming up here that you're going to have to contend with. And you're going to have to repackage so that you can digest it as well as other people needing to digest it that you're dealing with. And whatever that discord or that awkwardness is, it will further be intensified by a level of tension regarding your identity, okay, yourself, what you're pioneering. So something is transforming or being destroyed as it relates to your identity or what you're pioneering. And this could be related to whatever is culminating, climaxing, or ending with this full moon in your 10th house of status and career. Okay? So that's what we got going on for the beautiful Capricorns. Aquarius is for you, your full moon, whatever's climaxing, ending, um, needing to be addressed with all those Libra characteristics I just mentioned. In your ninth house of foreign people, foreign land, people, politics, legal, law, the occult, higher education, looking at the bigger picture, snake oil salesman. And Whatever is occurring here or what, whatever is the outcome of this culmination or whatever is being addressed or ended is going to create a discord, an awkwardness as it relates to your self-value, the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own, the body politic, um, creature comforts, stubbornness. So you might want to ask yourself, were you involved with anything that 
you are now ending or something now needs to be addressed, but it caused a side problem. It caused a side awkwardness as it relates to that self-value, the body politic, and the expansion of the disillusionment. Or even the greater creation, the greater creativity in this area of your life. And then on top of that, you are going to have a laser beam focus from Pluto going straight into that full moon in Libra regarding equality, justice, fairness, and all the characteristics I mentioned that are activating your 12th house. So there could be some tensions here coming from a Pisces person. Or maybe you're tense about a Pisces person or something hidden, unconscious, subconscious. Hospitals research, addictions. Psychosis. Sacrifice. Did you sacrifice somebody, Aquarius, for someone else? Did you sacrifice someone for the greater good? Be careful with this. It won't turn out well. But then again, someone around you may have done that to someone. And you're observing that now. So this culmination at this full moon, you're going to see it. You're going to feel it. Something is going to feel as though the energy is changing. Is it changing with you or against you? That's what you got to ask yourself. Pisces, for you, your eighth house has an ending, a culmination or something that needs to be addressed here. It's about joint finances, intimacy, sex, death, taxes, rebirth, revenge, jealousy, obsession. So something in here ends or is addressed finally. You know, maybe you decide, I'm done dealing with this person. I'm done keeping this person's secrets. Why? It's doing nothing for me. I need to get it out. I need to let this truth out. And what's happening here is this energy has caused issues regarding a disillusionment relative to your identity, your person, what you're trying to pioneer. Where you're selfish, but this could also be great creativity. Because Jupiter is great, expansive, Neptune is disillusionment and creativity, psychic abilities even. And then you've got your 11th house, Pluto in your 11th house, literally laser focused on that full moon of equality, justice, and fairness, but causing tension through hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, and associations. Commitments and loyalties. So be aware of that as well. And then Aries, for you, you are having a culmination, something that needs to be addressed or ended in your seventh house. So of course, Aries, you are the first sign of the zodiac. So therefore, you always get, you know, double energy because your houses are lined up and wherever the signs are, they line up exactly with with the chart. So for you, this full moon is coming in for romantic partnerships, business partnerships, equality, justice, fairness, indecision. That's what needs to be addressed, culminated, or ended. But this is causing a level of tension or awkwardness with the 12th house perhaps with a Pisces person regarding the unconscious, the subconscious psychic abilities, sacrifice, martyrdom, addictions, psychosis, hospitals, and research. 
it's kind of like Aries, it's kind of like whack-a-mole, okay? This that's what this full moon is like. It's, it's like whack-a-mole. Once you achieve something or end something, there are two other things that pop up that need to be addressed. And it does cause a feeling of, oh dear, what did I do? Or oh dear, how did that happen? Or oh dear. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. And then on top of that, so you got to repackage that. You got to balance out your house of the other and your hidden house. You got to balance that out. Because what it looks like to me is that commitment and that loyalty, possibly with a father figure or with a husband or somebody older than you, maybe even a boss, whatever it is, that energy is coming out and it's saying, you need to Put your time and your energy in what I want and what I think is best for all of us. And as you are giving to the other, you feel as though your own person, your own internal self, your own inner child is being ignored. So you are going to have to somehow create energy to fulfill the other's wishes because that's what Libra is all about. Fulfill the other's wishes while also fulfilling your own inner child needs or your hidden needs or your sleep maybe you need more sleep it could be that mundane because there is a transformation regarding your status your career your commitments your loyalties and relationships with older people or father figures Taurus for you your culmination something needing to be addressed or ended along with all of the aspects I talked about regarding Libra is happening in your sixth house. Equality, justice, and fairness in your sixth house of health and well-being. Paying attention to the details, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, being of service. maybe being too persnickety. But that's what is coming through here, Taurus. And so you've got to be able to balance that out as it culminates, ends, or is addressed. Because when you do that, when you achieve that, when you get there, your 11th house is going to create energy of awkwardness, of cross-purposes, of frustration, disillusionment, adjustment, discord. There is a boundarylessness here. There is an expansion of this disillusion or the expansion of the illusion or even great creativity, great psychic abilities that are happening here with the 11th house of hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, associations, mob rule. So you're going to have to repackage your 6th house and your 11th house. So it's more amenable to yourself as well as others. Because you're going to have a laser-focused tension coming in from your ninth house of foreign people, foreign lands, people, politics, legal law, the occult, higher education, training, looking at the bigger picture, snake oil salesman. There's the tension, there's the destruction, there's the transformation. Sagittarius people. Gemini, for you, your full moon is happening in your fifth house. So something is going to be culminating, needing to be addressed or ended in your fifth house of romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, pets, leadership, a big heart. But once or a Leo person, but once this happens, something else pops up that's going to cause a level of awkwardness in your status and career sector, your father sector, your older people sector, your boss sector. Okay. So you're going to have to repackage your fifth house and your 10th house in order to contend or ameliorate any type of awkwardness or strangeness between the two 
and between others. Because you are having a laser-focused tension coming in from your eighth house of joint finances, intimacy, sex, death, taxes, rebirth, obsession, jealousy, revenge. <clears throat> so I had a, a reading today in the RD with B saying, you know, getting revenge doesn't mean that that person is not going to continue to move forward. So what happens? Once somebody gets revenge, do they just, does that other person just stop what they're doing and say, oh my gosh, I, I didn't make it this time around because you sabotaged me. Oh dear me, dear, oh my, I'm, I'm never going to move forward again. No, they're just going to keep moving forward. <clears throat> The revenge hurts the person taking revenge out on the other, not the other way around. Eventually it won't. Maybe it does initially, but eventually it won't because eventually someone is just going to find their own way to find their happiness. So some of you Geminis might have been really identifying with that RD with B that I did earlier today. But that's where that's coming from. And that could even be a Leo person. You know, you're, you're getting a lot of tension possibly from a Leo person. Okay. Or a Scorpio person. Because you've got the culmination in your fifth, and you've got the tension coming in from your eighth. There might be somebody saying it's time to pay up. Maybe you've just got to pay off some bills. Um, but it could be metaphorical. It could be figurative. When we're talking about jealousy and revenge it's time to pay up can take on fairly different connotations so i'm going to leave that to you cancers for you your full moon is happening in your fourth house of cancer so you rule the fourth house and um what's happening here is there is something that needs to be addressed culminates or ends with your home and your family. With how you collect things. Your nostalgia. Cancer's rule nostalgia. And tradition. Possibly landscaping around your home could be part of this as well. But when this happens. When there is this ending here this culmination or whatever needs to be addressed here, something else pops up that causes awkwardness, that causes discomfort and discord and working in cross purposes. And that's going to be your ninth house, possibly a Sagittarian. And this could be about foreign people, foreign lands, people, politics, legal, law, the occult, higher education. Looking at the bigger picture, snake oil salesman. So there is going to be that balance. You need to repackage your fourth house and your ninth house so that it's more digestible for others and yourself. And then there's a laser focus of tension coming in from the seventh house. And this could be Libra people in your life causing a lot of frustration, causing a lot of tension. As it relates to equality, justice, fairness, business partnerships, and romantic partnerships. Because there's a destruction here. There's something transforming here. And that is making a beeline right to your full moon in your fourth house, affecting your home and your family. 
Leo, for you, this is happening in your third house of uh, Gemini, ruled by Gemini. So this might have something to do with the Gemini. And this is all about contracts, agreements, negotiations, short distance travel, siblings, the neighborhood, the truth versus the lie. So something is culminating, needing to be addressed or ended here. However, whatever happens here, even signing on the dotted line, whatever happens here, all of a sudden, awkwardness and tension come up in your eighth house of Scorpio. So there's a level of tension or awkwardness between you and a Scorpio. It could be. And this is possibly regarding joint finances, intimacy. I just heard scandal. <laughs> what? All right, Leo, what's going on between you and a Scorpio? All right, some sort of scandal. Um, maybe you're going to reveal it. Maybe they're going to reveal it. Maybe you're part of it with a Scorpio. I don't know. But I did hear scandal. And so what's happening here, this is about joint finances, intimacy, sex, death, taxes, rebirth, um, jealousy, revenge, obsession. Leo, somebody here could be having an affair with a Scorpio. Just letting you know. But I would say for the most part, whatever type of contract you signed, it is affecting how you operate with someone else jointly. Through support, financial support. Or maybe someone you're intimate with. And you need to repackage that, balance that out so that everybody's okay with it. Because when you have a quincunx, there is a line of demarcation that is drawn. It is clearly awkward. So try to repackage it so it's not, it doesn't feel so awkward or it doesn't look so awkward to others if that is what you so choose. And then there is a lot of tension coming in from your sixth house. So whatever you did to achieve or culminate your third is now affecting your six of daily duties, um, health and well-being, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, being of service. There is a massive transformation or destruction here of what it once was to what it now will be. And this is directly affecting your seventh house of romantic partnerships, business partnerships, and um, equality, justice, and fairness. And then Virgo, for you, your full moon is happening in the second house. And the second house is ruled by Taurus. And for you, this is about self-value. The money you make from the company you work for. The money you make from the business you own. The body politic. Creature comforts. So something is ending, culminating, or needing to be addressed here. But as this is coming to fruition, whatever this may be, then out pops awkwardness with your romantic partnerships, business partnerships, equality, justice, and fairness. A Libra person, perhaps. So as you accomplish in your second, something goes awry in your seventh or something needs to be repackaged between your second and your seventh house. Because you are getting a laser focus tension coming in from your fifth house of children, romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, and pets, leadership, a big heart. And so this transformation or this destruction is personal. Are your children being affected by this? Because trust me, they're not going to be happy about it. This is a very difficult energy. When you're talking about equality, justice, and fairness, and you've got your self-value getting tensed up or stressed out by your child sector or your, your romantic sector, these are personal things. These, these can be difficult sometimes. 
But again, it may just be creativity. It may just be a little bit of risk taking. Okay, maybe someone coerced you. Maybe someone tried to convince you. Maybe someone tempted you. Maybe someone got you involved in something and now you're looking back on it and you're like, oh my God, why did I do that? You know, this is what a lot of people don't understand. What happens after the win? Is this what you wanted? This is what a lot of people do too, like when they want promotions. I want the title, I want the promotion, but do you want everything that goes along with it? Let's be aware of that. And this might be you, Virgo, or this might be somebody else in your life going through this. Libra, my beautiful Librans, this is your full moon. And so something is culminating, climaxing, or ending in your house of self. There could even be, maybe you've been suffering from headaches, or maybe you've had issues with the face, the head, the eyes, the ears, the nose, whatever it is, and now that's ending, okay, because the first house rules uh, the, the head. When you think of the ram in Aries, you think of the big ram's head. And so that's what Aries rules. And this is your first house, but this is your full moon. So how do you balance your identity in your business partnerships, in your romantic partnerships with equality, fairness, justice? This is going to be culminating, perhaps needing to be addressed or ended here. But once that's done, once you address that, once that culminates, once that ends, there is an awkwardness coming in through the sixth house, possibly a Virgo person. Regarding dotting the I's, crossing the T's, paying attention to detail, being of service. health and well-being. And that awkwardness is due to no barriers, no boundaries, or maybe an expansion of a level of creativity. Or maybe somebody needs to put a lid on it. Or maybe you're a great uh, maybe you work out and you're amazing at working out and you've got a great body or whatever and you throw it in everybody else's faces. That's going to cause tension. Because then your reputation is going to be one of a blowhard or something like that. That's, that's where you've got to repackage that so it's more palatable. Not only to yourself, acceptable to self, but palatable with others. Because there will be awkwardness here. And then you are going to have a laser-focused tension coming in from your fourth house of home and family and landscaping, land around the home. Collecting things, nostalgia. Are you holding on to something from your past Related to your identity, but it now screws up with your current everyday activities. Your everyday. Your health, your well-being. So be aware of that transformation or be aware of that destruction in that fourth house. Scorpio, for you, whoa, this full moon is in your 12th house. Now, this is emotions running high. Possibly regarding a Pisces. Could be regarding the past, the hidden, the unconscious, the subconscious, hospitals, research, addictions, sacrifice, unconditional love, psychic abilities, 
psychosis. So as something culminates, is addressed, or ends here, something else pops up that you must contend with a level of awkwardness as it relates to the fifth house of romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, pets, leadership, the heart. You know, there might be some things you've been you've been hiding or you know about your health, you're not getting it addressed, might be related to the heart. Maybe you want to go get your heart checked. Scorpio. Or maybe you're hearing about that. But for others of you, this could be something about some sort of hidden information, some something about um, something that you did subconsciously or unconsciously that now has you answering questions as it relates to strong leadership, as it relates to romance, children, or creativity, or risk-taking. You're going to have to answer those now because now it's awkward. Why? Because you may have done something or made a decision based on pressure, based on opinion, as opposed to fact. Potentially. Because you know like when you got passions rising up when you've got emotional tension, when you've got movement that is pressurized or movement because of releasing pressure. Sometimes people make decisions that were not in their best interest. And after they make those decisions, now people are looking at those people saying, why did you make that decision? What was your reasoning Is it because everybody to, everybody else told you to? I mean, there, there might be some ownership coming in here, Scorpio. If it's not with you, it's definitely going to be with somebody else. And this is related to a massive amount of tension coming from your third house of contracts, agreements, negotiations, short distance travel, siblings, the neighborhood, the truth versus the lie. So Scorpio, what I sense is happening here is someone made a commitment or signed on the dotted line. And that decision was based off of hidden information, potentially. And now the questions and the concerns coming forward regarding that risk-taking or regarding the choice as it relates to the romance, the children, the creativity, the risk-taking, the pets, the leadership, the heart, will need to be answered by you. And then Sag, for you, you are having a culmination, something that needs to be dressed or ended in your 11th house of hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, or associations. And you may have culminated something here. You may have addressed something here. You may have ended something here. Maybe you are moving on to the next phase. And this was based off of equality, justice, fairness, business partnerships, or romantic partnerships. But how did you get there? What energy was used? And what is now coming through on the other end? Questioning this outcome. It's going to be your family. It's going to be home and family. A lot of people that you consider family, could be even social groups to an extent, but people who you consider family 
they are going to ask you, why did you do this? I want to know. You had this goal, you had this hope, you had this wish, you had this dream, and you accomplished it, but at the expense of dot, dot, dot. And now there's an awkward feeling within that family unit. And the tension is coming through self-value, the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own, the body politic, the creature comforts, the stubbornness, Tauruses. So for a lot of you out there, there could be Maybe a feeling, for example, um, just give you an example, maybe a family member, or maybe, maybe you think a daughter, a son, a cousin, an uncle, whatever, is, you know, the bee's knees, okay? Like, they're like, they're like the best of the best, you know, nothing better since sliced bread, whatever. Like you think they're just absolutely like perfect, as perfect as they get. But then what happens is you've got this disillusion about this, a grand illusion about home and family or how you identify with your group that you call family. And you find out that maybe they're not as pristine as they say they were. Maybe they're a drug addict. Maybe they're a prostitute. Maybe they're, um, you know, they're an abuser. Maybe they're a narcissist. And like you're discovering this. So your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, your networks, and your associations might be a little bit dashed or might have to go through a repackaging phase. Maybe you had certain people over here and other people over here, but now maybe they're going to switch places because you're discovering that by you standing in your sovereignty or even someone else standing in their sovereignty, it changes the dynamics. Because self-value is what is causing this particular tension. Or the money that you make from the business you own or the company you work for is directly affecting your hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, and associations. But at what cost? Because everybody, I don't care who you are, you are going to be questioned regarding the energy of this full moon. Because we have a quincunx. That quincunx is Neptune and Jupiter conjunct. And so I'll describe that now that we're done here. So let's go ahead and get into the summary. So what I really want to mention here is that Jupiter-Neptune conjunct energy, which is quincunxing that full moon. This causes discord, awkwardness, and cross-purpose. A Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces is the expansion of the illusion the growth of the disillusion, the expansion of the creativity, the expansion of boundarylessness. Having no boundaries, no barriers. This is why, and it's very, very important, and this probably again, happened upwards of seven days ago. As this culminated, be careful who you trust. Anybody who says, trust me. I want to be your trusted voice. Trust us. Trust them. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Now, if somebody says, I want, I 
want you to make a decision that's best for you. Don't do what I do. Do your own research. Really scrutinize your business partnerships, romantic partnerships, through the lens of equality, fairness, and justice. And when I say scrutinize, I don't mean going into people's purses and looking at their phones or anything like that. That's not what I'm talking about. When you scrutinize through the lens of equality, fairness, and justice, you are taking a step back and you are looking at your relationships, business or romantic, and you are saying, is there equality? Is there, am I giving them what they deserve? Are they giving me what I deserve? Are there things they said that they were going to do that they've never done? Or do they do things for me without even asking? You've got to weigh what these are for you. And if it has to do with the 11th house for sure, and the people being affected in their 11th are Sages, Tauruses, and Pisces. You know, the hopes, wishes, the dreams, the goals, and the networks, and the associations. You've got to make darn sure you know who you can trust. Some of you Sages, some of you Tauruses, and some of you Pisces, you've probably already said it. You've probably already said, I don't trust anybody. I'm done trusting blindly. I've learned my lesson. So, I think there are going to be a lot of you out there that are aware that if you start talking about this, communicating about it, and sharing this information with others, you are going to have their undivided attention. I apologize, my dog is scratching his collar right now he's just having a heyday at it there he's done yeah anyway so that is what I have for everyone I really hope that you enjoyed this transmission uh, let me know what you think. I wish all of you the best. Much light, much love, and many blessings. Take care of yourselves.